OPIC, an open government initiative. And this means the country has not been receiving sufficient fuel. Therefore, the pump prices have significantly risen. Most of the motorists ha have now resorted to other means of transport, including walking to work and cycling. While most of the people who run manufacturing plants have asked people they are staffed to stay at home until the fuel crisis is resolved. And Ugandans do not know who to blame among Minister of Energy and Mineral Development, Uganda Revenue Authority, and the Minister of Health. And we honestly do not know when this crisis will come to an end. But with us this morning, to give us insights and hope on when this crisis will end is Mr. Solomon Muita, the Principal Public Relations Officer, Minister of Energy and Mineral Development. Solomon, you're most welcome. Thank you. Um, I'm glad to be here. So how is the situation at Busia and Malaba Ugandans want to know who exactly to blame, who is responsible for the mess, and when do we expect it to end? Well, Duncan, um, I don't really want to, to get into a blame game because we are one government. And, uh, you know, as a government, it's, it's one engine pushing towards the same direction. We, whatever we do is for the best of the, the Ugandan. So we, we all know that we've had the COVID um, pandemic and recently we got a new variant called Omicron. Uh, almost at the same time th when we were supposed to be opening the economy, the president announced much earlier that January, come January, we are opening. And then Omicron arrived the same time. So a mix between opening and you know, also preventing people from getting Omicron uh, is what resulted into the new guidelines for that, the requirement for people getting into the country to undergo tests. And uh, at the borders at Malaba and Busia, the drivers uh, protested. Like you've seen it on the news all over the place, they protested, they didn't want to pay for the test or to con take another test so they packed the, the trucks. Traffic went into Kenya, about 75 kilometers into Kenya, and it started on the 1st of January up to about uh, 13th, 14th, when the Minister of Health now decided to go and do free tests. Uh, some of them didn't want to pay, some of them didn't want to repeat the test. So the ministry team went to the two borders and started testing uh, for the trucks to start entering. But along the way is when we realized that we ran, started running short of petrol. Uganda is landlocked. Uh, we get all the refined fuel products from our neighbors through Kenya, through the Mombasa port, and through the port at Dar es Salaam in Tanzania. But majority of our fuel comes through Kenya because it's a bit shorter and cheaper. We pay $100 on every 1,000 liters for transport from Kenya and 120 from Tanzania for every 1,000 liters. So the businessmen uh, prefer to pick it from Kenya 
And that's why we had this crisis. Um, of course, it didn't completely run out because we continued re receiving some fuel from Tanzania. And some of the oil marketing companies had uh, a bit of uh, stock in the tanks, especially companies with uh, bigger storage. Uh, but uh, because majority were not getting stock, some of the businessmen started buying from within. So you go to a neighboring station if they have, pick some stock and sell. But of course the neighboring station will sell to the other at retail price. And that has, that's what caused a bit of a hike because the people buying from within are saying, much as I bought from my neighbor, I still need to make a bit of profit on it. Uh, but the intention is to service my customer, but I need to make a little profit. That's why the prices started going up. Uh, but government, like you've uh, been following, government has intervened. Different teams have gone to the border. We, the health teams went. Uganda Revenue Authority, the team was reinforced. We had a bit of police and army um, moving in to help um, in terms of guiding and clearing traffic. Um, we had to try and create a bit of tri priority route for the fuel trucks, which didn't exactly work because even the dry cargo <laughs> trucks said we were here. We've been here together. So we want to move. <laughs> so, of course, if the dry cargo truck doesn't move out of the way, the fuel truck will not move. Yeah. So we ended up handling it to jointly, dry cargo, wet cargo, um, but still the speeds were slow until government again had to decide to waive the tests. So the tests are not happening right now um, until we clear the congestion at the border. As of yesterday, we, we've had a considerable number of trucks in. Over 500 trucks of fuel have entered the country. We, by yesterday, we had uh, 15, about 15 kilometers of traffic into Kenya. So we are hoping that uh, in a few days, in a few days, we should uh, have the borders cleared and uh, things should start coming back to normal. The, the traffic in Kenya has cleared from 75 kilometers to 15 kilometers. Yes. This means we have very few trucks left. Well, 15 kilometers is not exactly few. Um, there are still many. Uh, it's, uh, it's also a bit of a distance. Imagine they are packed, you yeah. know, unlocking that. Yeah, about two, three days, we should be able to clear that too. Because as they come in, Kenya Revenue Authority has to do its own checks. You know, they put seals when trucks are setting off. They have to check that the seals have yeah. not been tampered with. Then they have to remove their seals so for Uganda Revenue Authority to take over. And also it puts its own uh, checks whether the volumes have not been tampered with and so on. There are some protocols at the borders. Uh, Kenyan police has been helpful working with the Kenya Revenue Authority on the other side. And then Uganda police and uh, UPDF on this side helping URA. And then we have our own uh, fuel marking team at the border. They've also been working uh, weekends um, until late hours. They've been working to make sure that uh, at least whichever truck comes in is cleared to move. Uh, because the situation we've been witnessing certain parts of the country where prices were even, dis they were displaying prices up to 10,000 shillings. We really want to bring that to an end so that we go back to what we, we had about November last year. Because we, festive season, December prices changed a little bit, but we want to take, we desire to take it back yeah. to what it was in November. Yeah, th thank you, Solomon. Our, the people watching us, you'll have an opportunity to ask your question or raise your concern in the next few minutes. So, S Solomon, I was watching news last night, and yeah, Solomon, I was watching news last night, and one of the leading TV stations reported that um, fuel, 
prices had risen as, as, as high as up to 8,500 shillings in the areas of Gayaza, Kasangati. And uh, I think the ministry has the mandate to regulate fuel prices in this country. And I think the Minister for Energy has powers to issue an instrument capping fuel at a certain price, maybe 5,000 in this case, looks like moderate. Why isn't she doing this? Um, Duncan, what the public needs to remember is that Uganda as a country uh, liberalized the petroleum uh, sector as early as 1994. So we opened it up to we opened it up to the business community to compete fairly. Um, so we are depending on forces of demand and supply to determine the price. It is uh, you know to some they think it is uh, not the favorable um, the favorable way they want things to happen. Many people would be happy if the government regulated the prices. However, according to our Petroleum Supply Act of 2003, the minister can license and can ensure that the environment is good for the players to compete without uh, undue advantage. And uh, the prices would, det would be determined by the market Yes, over the past 14 or so years, because we had a big disruption in 2007, 2008. But over the last uh, 14 years, we've managed to keep the market a bit stable. Uh, prices haven't really been skyrocketing. Uh, supply has been stable. And, you know, the model we have in Uganda has been working. The minister, yes, can... We are the regulators, we license, we make sure there is no dumping on the market, we make sure there is no smuggling and uh, there is no adulteration of the fuel. And we also maintain a reserve price for purposes of uh, ensuring that the businessmen are not making abnormal profits because that is what can cause trouble. So we, for us to determine the reserve price, which we don't publicize, it is, you know, it, we negotiate on behalf of the oil marketing companies from the supplier in, uh, at the border. As East African countries, we negotiate, as governments negotiate on behalf of the companies, and then they commit to buy. So they come and pay for the product. So we know the cost at which they buy, and we know the transport they incur, we know the handling charges, we know the dollar rate, we know the tax component, we know the storage rates. So after compounding all these costs, then we are able to tell that a margin of this amount is enough for these companies. So what we let them do is to play within that margin, you know, within that margin. Uh, one trader can say 100 shillings profit is enough for me. Another one will say, for me, I'll take 300 shillings or I'll take 500. So it, it now comes down to if you, if you want a profit of 500 of, of every liter, are you able to attract as many customers? Uh, maybe someone near a taxi park will say, I can get a margin of 100 shillings, but um, I have so many taxis yeah, coming seems, seems uh, and border high. borders. So, the, those are, you know, the dynamics and that's how the prices in Uganda have managed to remain as competitive as possible. Sometimes, by the way, we are able to have lower prices than places in Kenya and Tanzania. Yet on our fuel, we add uh, $100 for every 1,000 liters of fuel for transport only. Mm. From Tanzania, uh, it's $120. Uh, for transport, transporting a thousand liters. But still we manage to remain competitive. We manage to keep our prices lower than some places in Kenya and Tanzania. So we are not badly off. <coughs> in the circumstances, the minister really doesn't have to come and uh, dictate the price. 
Because even recently, when we had this uh, bit of instability, the ministry said a liter of petrol should not exceed 5,000. Yeah, but even after that, I know some people adjusted to 5,000, but we still have people selling below 5,000, yeah, which is a good thing. And we believe uh, we shall get back to what we had in November. Now, the issue of reserves, it is on everyone's lips. People are wondering what happened to our fuel reserves. The storage facility is in danger. Well, this uh, crisis aside, Kenya is going into a general election in August. The campaigns are starting, I think, in two months or so. And so far, they do not look good. One of the presidential aspirants had their rally in Nairobi. Uh, you know, there were you know, skirmishes of violence and, and, and so forth. So we are thinking, what if the situation in Kenya escalates during the general election and then they block our supply routes? What is our plan B? Okay, plan B. Let me start with the reserves a bit. As a country, we are able to maintain stock, uh, reliable stock for at least 10 days. Uh, all this storage, uh, private or government put together, we are able to maintain stock for at least 10 days. And, and uh, you, you know, we demonstrated it during this very crisis that uh, from first up to 14 when government intervened, much as uh, petrol stocks dropped a bit, we still had fuel. We have uh, players here who have told us that uh, for them they have stock that can even take them up to the end of the month. Certain um, oil marketing companies have a bit of stock, especially those with bigger storage facilities. You see them, Banda, Busega, area, different places. We have people who have bigger tanks. Ginger which belongs to the government. Ginger was uh, given to UNOC. UNOC is the government's uh, business arm. It is supposed to make money. Uh, government has not told UNOC to just sit with the product. Uh, every, you know, every, uh, when UNOC is given money, funds to operate, it has to come back and, and uh, report profits it has made for the government. Mm. So UNOC has remodeled what you, you know as the ginger storage, sto the ginger reserve, into a, strategy, into a storage uh, terminal where they can also sell the product mm. on open market. So they maintain a certain le a level of stock, but they also sell. Um, when this crisis came, still, they were trading. And because of the, you know, their trucks were coming also, they were expecting fuel, so they were trading. Mm. So at some point, they also ran out of stock, just like the others are running out of stock. But that, notwithstanding, the, the government has not given up on, you know, planning for, for the citizens. There are bigger plans to have bigger storage in the country. Land has already been secured in areas of Mpiji because 70% of the petroleum market in Uganda is around Kampala mm. and neighboring areas. So even ginger is a bit far for, for for the users, the, the bigger market of the petroleum products. So there are plans to put up a, a facility uh, which is more than 10 times bigger than ginger at a, a place called Namwabula in Impiji. We are putting up a 320 million liter storage facility. And it will, there are, Pipelines being going to be laid from Hoima to that facility, so we can tap from the refinery in Hoima. In the next few years, when the refinery starts working, it will be processing 60,000 barrels 
of fuel on a daily basis. Um, that aside, plans for the future, because you're saying Kenya mm -hmm. has elections. Yes, Kenya has elections. We've had a major disruption when we had when there were violent elections in Kenya in two or seven, two or eight. Mm -hmm. That is why government opened another route. Because when Kenya stopped supplying, Tanzania is there. We have Tanzania a little expensively, but still, if we can't go to Kenya, we shall just have to go to Tanzania at an extra twenty dollars per mm. a thousand liters. So just for that period of a crisis, uh, our businessmen can just change the route to Tanzania. And also, we have licensed two companies to bring in fuel via the lake. We have Mahathi. Mahathi has constructed also a big storage tank at uh, Bukasa in Entebbe. It is a 70 million liter tank storage facility. And they've also constructed batches, the first batch, which can bring a thousand, one million liters at once. It is being tested. You know, they are doing technical testing. It was launched. In a month or so, it will start bringing fuel from Kisumu. Uh, luckily, the Kenyan pipeline company laid uh, pipe, pipes from Mombasa up to Kisumu nearby. So our batch is a big ship which only transports fuel. Our batch will start going to Kisumu. It brings uh, products into a pipeline, it's from the pipeline, transports via Lake Victoria up to Entebbe. The 70 million liter storage tanks are also, there is a pipeline uh, up to the lake. So even ginger, we are putting a pipeline to the lake. So the batch can come, fill ginger, it comes, it fills Kampala, sorry, Entebbe, as we wait for MPG. So alternatives are there. And also, uh, we have two operational uh, cargo ferries on the lake. There is another company called One, Petro One Petroleum. It was also licensed, and it's bringing. So we have learnings from this uh, situation uh, at Malaba and Busia and uh, in future we should also be able to plan better uh, for for that route yeah so we can see the situation is about to, to normalize just a few kilometers of trucks to Kiria 15 kilometers so if the Malaba Busia you know border situation stabilizes do you see the fuel prices going back to normal and the normal being for the crisis? Um, there is no reason why the prices should stay up because the reason we were given for the, incre the recent increments was that they had low supplies. The prices on the international market have not increased uh, since they went up uh, a few months ago. They went up, they are still a bit up, but not as much as what uh, our businessmen are, you know, are selling, uh, the, you know. Uh, you, they went up by about, you know, they caused an increment of about 200 to 300 shillings in Uganda, which pushed the liter of fuel from about 4,200 to 4,500. We, we want to assure the public that once this, uh, the borders are cleared, once we are sure that the routes are now uh, clear for the trucks to go to Kenya and come back to bring the products, once we are sure that the, the stocks have been built, uh, the prices shall come down. There is no other reason for prices to stay up. Thank you, Solomon. Uh, friends, we are now going into the second session of our Baraza, where you have an opportunity to ask your question or make a comment. Thank you so much for continuing to join us. 
Uh, my name is Duncan Abigaba. I'll be signing out for now. And, and, and please contact us at the GCIC if you have any queries or you want us to host a particular government agents on this Baraza session, uh, 0414-670-288, that is on WhatsApp. Uh, you can send us an email, citizen at gcic.go.ug, or follow the GCIC UG uh, Twitter everywhere, and our Baraza handle for all the Baraza content is at gcic underscore Baraza. Thank you so much. We now go into the session where you ask your question or make your comment. GCIC, an open government initiative.